Hello and welcome to Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union's Small Business University. My name is Kelly Leonard. In addition to being your host of this monthly event, I'm also the CEO of Taylor Leonard Corporation, a woman-owned small business located in Montgomery County. Each month we gather the business community together to network, to collaborate, to share best practices in an effort to stimulate regional economic development. Thank you for joining us on the live stream as well as to those of you that are here in the television studio. Today we have the awesome privilege of having Michael Rizavi here with us. Michael is a senior advisor with the U.S. Patent and Trade Office and he's going to be sharing with us strategies to have business success and how to protect our intellectual property. Thank you again for joining us and let's kick it off. Michael? Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me start asking a real quick question uh, before we start. How many people here uh, consider themselves entrepreneurs, inventors? Great. Okay. Uh, how many people own businesses or are thinking to start a business? Okay. Well, what I want to say is if you own a business or you're thinking of starting a business, you're an entrepreneur. You're an inventor. Just the fact you have to keep thinking every day of different way of conducting your business, how you get ahead, how you put things together, how you do your staffing. So, so with that, I want to start that uh, intellectual property is part of the whole thing. So what we're going to do today, talk about three different issues. Uh, what patent and trademark office can help you, how they can help you to, with your business. Uh, what are the first steps to, to, uh, to take to, to get a patent? And the third thing is what uh, uh, help you can get from our office or even outside that we're going to get to. So the first thing is um, you want to know what, are, what is IP, what is intellectual property, what type of intellectual property really exists. Uh, I'm very sure some of you think about patents, some of you think about uh, trademarks, but in fact there are five different type of intellectual properties that you can apply for. Uh, we call them um, utility patents or a design patent, and we're going to talk about them shortly. Uh, trade secrets, copyrights, and trademarks. This, this just shows your overall uh, uh, picture of the whole thing, and we're going to get to each one. This is a good uh, example. If, if you have a, a mobile phone, uh, what type of intellectual property you can get on your mobile phone. If you look at the trademarks, the, the word Apple, you can apply and, 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 and get a trademark on, on the name or your logo, uh, the iPhone, the product, the software, iOS, or, or uh, Safari. Uh, you can apply and get a trademark on that name, which you will own. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a second. Uh, which part of this iPhone you can get the patent? Um, obviously the speakers, the semiconductors, any part of the hardware, any part of the device, you can apply for a patent and that could be separate, really. that could be a separate patent. Uh, copyright, uh, the software obviously, you can apply for uh, copyright uh, to get on the software, you, the instructional uh, man, uh, man, uh, manual, the ringtone, and soon um, the smell also uh, that you may uh, get on your phone or other devices and you can get a uh, copyright on that. Um, the, the design uh, patent, which is a little different than the utility, uh, as, as you see it says design, which is the shape of your phone. Uh, how the, the phone is shaped, if there is any marks on the phone, uh, the color on the trims and so on and so forth. And the last thing is trade secrets. Uh, trade secrets, obviously, just like what you see, uh, is a secret. We don't know, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So uh, what's trademark? What does trademark really give your business? Trademark, it's, it's, uh, it gives you the right to enforce uh, nationally uh, and to bring legal action. So in other words, once you get your trademark on your name, on our, your logo, if somebody else try to infringe on that, you can take them to court. And, and you can, you're able to show that that 
you own that uh, trademark or, or logo and uh, you would own it forever as soon as, as long as uh, uh, you pay uh, for the fees uh, every 10 years or so. So, uh, so some, something you want to think about, if you got a business, you want to think about your name or your logo and you want to make sure you get that uh, registered through the trademarks. Uh, what else it does for you uh, at customs? Uh, it would get recorded at customs, so if somebody brings another goods with that same name, uh, they can check and they can confiscate if, if it's a duplicate, it's same name or logo as yours. Uh, it's a, a basis for uh, uh, foreign filings and also it gets uh, published in uh, uh, our office database. So when somebody else files with a similar or same name, they can check and to make sure if it exists, then they're not going to obviously uh, give them the trademark. And copyright, uh, it runs through the uh, uh, Library of Congress, and it's basically any original works of authorship. If you've ever written a paper, or uh, you have a, uh, you've written music, or a poem, or uh, you can file for a copyright. Um, now, everybody here has written a paper at some point, or a poem, or a music. Uh, you do own the copyright. However, it's a little different than register it. If you want, if somebody is going to copy in future, maybe copy what you've written, if you have the copyright, if you register it with the copyright office, then obviously you can take them to court. So uh, that's something you want to think about. It's very simple to, to apply and uh, you can go online and, and get your copyright. Um, trade secrets is um, what you hear is, it's, is the secrets that you decide if you do not want to register, get a patent or, or uh, uh, on your uh, invention, uh, what we call trade secrets. You can, uh, usually people that have a customer list or uh, they have an algorithm or they have a, uh, a product that they want, they don't want to share with others. Uh, so you keep that as a secret. Uh, we don't have any federal laws yet on trade secret. How, however, all states have some sort of uh, trade secret laws. Um, so trade secrets are good until if somebody does a reverse engineering. Let's say you came up with a new way of making this specific type of cookie that stays fresh for, the, for three years or four years. Uh, if somebody else does a reverse engineering and find out exactly how you made it, and they start making that product and sell it, that's it. You have nothing to really to go after them. Uh, you lost it. If you tell your partner about your trade secret and, and they share it with public or others, again, you cannot do anything about it. So uh, the problem with trade secrets is once it's out, you really uh, cannot go after anybody on, on infringing on your, on your product. Uh, patents. What does really patents do for you? Patents exclude others. Once you apply for a patent and you receive your patent, it would exclude others from making, using that product, selling it, or offering for sale or importing the claimed invention. So in other words, you really own, just like when you buy a property and you get the title, once you receive your patent on your invention, you own that property. And nobody else can really do anything unless they come to you. One of the big things, uh, it's, it's uh, for past few years, uh, people now start licensing. Uh, once they own their patent, they go to others, they sell the right or uh, fully, or they, they give it to another company and they get into some sort of um, licensing agreement and they, they can get paid perhaps the rest of their life or the rest of uh, you know, when the product is being sold. So uh, uh, now the patents, um, the life of patent is 20 years from the time you apply. Uh, so if it takes three years to receive your patent, you have 17 more years that you own that patent. Once the 20 years is up, basically it's open and anybody can and make it or sell it. Um, copyright is a little different. Once you apply for a copyright, Copyright is good for the life of the author plus 70 years. 
Uh, trademark, as I mentioned, is good forever, as long as you pay the maintenance fee. Uh, so, uh, and the design patent uh, is good for 15 years from the time you receive uh, the patent. And the design patent, generally, just like the name says, is the design of anything. So, um, why get a patent? Uh, what patent really helps you to gain entry to, to, to market? It would exclude others. Uh, so once your, your invention is out, you get your patent, you put it out, the, uh, the others really should come look at it before they decide to, to make a similar type of device. Uh, it's a, uh, again, as I mentioned, you know, it helps you with the licensing, which is it's, uh, quite a few people are doing it now. We also have people that they group their patents. They get several patents on their invention with slight variation and they also um, are able to sell that whole uh, portfolio of, of their patents. So what's patentable? Um, as I mentioned, is any type of method of making something, you can apply for a patent, manufacture, any type of a process. If you have, uh, you're putting together a, a specific, you have a machine and you have the process how you put this machine together, that's uh, better or, or you think you know, the public would be more interested or, or uh, uh, you think is, is novel, uh, a machine, any type of a device or improvement of uh, all of these. Uh, most of the, uh, we issued patent number nine million about a year ago in June. Uh, 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 patent and trademark office, actually we've been in, in law, into law about 200, not about 226 years ago. So since then we've issued, uh, we're probably about 9.5 million patent uh, by now, uh, just in the United States. So um, what are the criteria of getting a patent on your invention? Your invention has to be new, something novel, uh, has to be useful, uh, has to have some sort of utility, and uh, the biggest part has to be unobvious over what was made before. Uh, so, uh, and that's something against case by case. And once you write your uh, patent application, it has to be in, in a language that everybody, the, the examiner and anybody can, can understand uh, the way you write it. Um, okay, so what are the steps to get a patent? Uh, I put number of things here. Uh, the first thing is you have to know what cannot be protected. Um, uh, the second thing is you want to do a search. You really need to go out, and we're going to talk about it in a second, uh, which areas you can go. Do a search on your invention to make sure you don't really start this long process if they, your invention exists already. Uh, you want to think about how much it costs you, uh, not only our filings, which I'm going to show you in a second, how much it costs uh, with our office also if you're going to get an attorney outside, how long it takes, uh, what kind of patent do you need? Uh, <clears throat> we have provisional and non-provisional patent, and, um, which we're going to talk in a second. Uh, do you need an attorney? How long your intellectual property uh, lasts? As I mentioned, it's 20 years, but if it takes you five years to get your patent, you only have 15 years, and you have to design your business around that 15 years, because once that 20 years is up, then really is open and anybody can, and can uh, make and sell your invention. Um, uh, the, is your intellectual property, do you want it really only protection in the United States or also you're going to go outside in other countries? Uh, you have to think about where you're going to make your invention and where you're going to sell it. If you're going to do only in the U.S., that's fine, but if you're going to go outside, then you want to think about applying for um, patents in those countries also. Um, the filing process and the examination process. If, if you have a good idea, then really you're on your way, and my office can help you a lot to just teach you about those. So why search? Uh, searching does a number of things for you. The first thing is really it, it would teach you whether your uh, invention exists. It would teach you uh, what are the relevant, as I said, prior, what we call prior art, other inventions that's been out there. It teaches you about the history of the invention, where it started and where the state of technology is. Uh, it will teach you if 
by any chance your invention does exist and you find it, it would teach you the issues and the problems and the challenges that particular invention has. And perhaps as an entrepreneur, you start thinking about modifying and making that invention better. It will teach you about um, competitors who are out there, who is, who, who is making that specific device and, and uh, invention you have. Um, and then it would teach you also about how you put together your document, how you write your patent application. Even if you get an attorney, it's much better if you're more knowledgeable, you know how to at least start and how to put together the initial patent application before uh, your uh, representative take over. And uh, uh, the main part of patent application, what we call is the claim language. The claim is where it really gives you protection if somebody infringes on you or you infringe on somebody and you have to go to court, they look at the limitation is what it is in your claim language. So um, there are a number of areas you can search. Uh, we put down here, you know, my office, have, we have a system called East and West and a uh, and number of other things as you see here. We have uh, what we call uh, uh, patent and trademark resource centers. They're pretty much in every state. If you, go, if you can come to my office in, in Alexandria, obviously we can help you with the search. If not, you can go to any of these centers and they have librarians that they can help you. Now, uh, most of foreign offices, um, such as European, Japanese, Korean, and others also, they have a great database that you can look at the patents that exist in those, uh, for those countries. Um, also, I encourage everybody to come to my office. Make sure you, know, you do some type of Google search or any type of, type of web-based search so, uh, so you understand where the invention is, your invention. Because as I said, if it's out there, you really don't want to go through this whole process. I have quite a few people that come to my office. Once they say they do a search, they come back, they said, OK, I found out this invention, this is very close, it's very similar, but while I was doing this search, I found that now I can do this improvement to it. And what do you think? So, uh, so that's what all the searches does for you. The patent examination process, real quick, since uh, we're running out of time. Uh, once you, you file uh, your uh, um, non-provisional application, uh, it gets, goes through what we call pre-exam and then gets assigned to our examiners. Our examiners review, they do a search, and then they, they form their opinions. Uh, most of our cases, you have an initial, what we call an office action. You have an initial report from the examiners come to you. Do not give up. This is just, you have to just read that, understand what they mean. It's great to pick up the phone, if you're prosecuting yourself, to call the examiners, ask for an interview. Uh, I tell all, all the pro se's and all the inventors, ask for interview, talk to the examiners, they're very helpful and they wanna help you. If you do have an invention, they would help you to, to get your patent. So the process is initially they examine and then they go through, they give you an office action, you come back and reply, and most cases it amend the claim language and then it goes through the second time around. If they uh, decide they can give you the patent, you're done at that point, if not, you have a choice to go to what we call a board of appeal, uh, which is internal to our office. <clears throat> and um, at that point, the, the, the uh, judges would make a decision. If you don't agree with their decision, you can go to courts and then you can take your case all the way to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court usually um, uh, hears few uh, patent cases every year. So um, they, do you really need a uh, patent? There is a myth. It says, if I publish my, uh, uh, my invention, I have protection. Absolutely wrong. If you publish your invention before you file, by statute, you have one year. If the one year passes, you published it at any type of form, that publication can be used against you if you do not file within one year to reject your application. So this is something really uh, good to know and you want to uh, follow. The provisional application, I, I encourage most um, inventors. If you do have an invention, it's very inexpensive. If you're a micro entity, um, which means you've applied, you've put in less than four patent applications and your income is below just about $160,000 a year, 
you consider as part of micro entity, you get 75% discount, which means you can file for a provisional application for only $65. Provisional application does not get examined. You, you file and then it gives you uh, protection for, for, doesn't give you protection, but is a, is a placeholder for a year until you file your non-provisional. So I'm gonna run through, this is the basic fees, as I mentioned, um, to file a regular util application is about 400, and the design is little under 400 if you want. That's just our fees for our office. Uh, the resources, we have number of resources. My office, we have an uh, office within my office called Per Se Assistant Shop. We, if you can call us, you can come in, you can send an email, you can, um, uh, come in, we sit down with you, and we help you actually to, to kind of guide you how you can um, write your application, and, and if you have questions, we answer. There is a program, pro, uh, pro bono and the law school program, that exists in pretty much all 50 states. You can go online, you apply, and there are attorneys that actually, if you qualify, you put your application in, the attorneys, patent attorneys, are going to help you to uh, prosecute your, your patent applications for totally free. So I encourage you, you go online and look at both pro bono and law school. There are law, school, law students usually, but they will um, help you. They work with the patent attorney, and again, they would help you to prosecute your patent applications. So I, I talk about small entity and micro entity, which I just said, small entity gets 50% discount, micro entity gets 75% discount, uh, which again, if you, have a very small company or you haven't filed, you know, you file less than four patent application and your income is below a certain level. So with that, uh, just one more second, we have four other offices bes beside Alexandria, as you see here. Um, and this is it, this is our information. If you need help, you can definitely go online. We have lots of good information online and you can contact us to come in. Thank you very much. Uh, now I think we're open to Q&A, so uh, if you have a question, please uh, go by mic and uh, be more than happy to answer. Uh, thank you. I'm Ken Weiss from Plans and Solutions, and the question is about trademarks. If I um, register a trademark, which is a combination uh, design logo, I'm sorry, combination name design, and some competitor starts using just the name or just the design, is that likely to be considered infringement? Uh, yes, yeah. Again, uh, you know, I would pursue a, a counsel and uh, talk to them, but definitely, if, if you have filed, you have a trademark for your, your name and logo combined, and they use part of it, still can be considered uh, infringing on your uh, trademark. But again, I would, see, I would see an agent or an attorney to, to help you with that. Okay, thank you. Cool. Hi, I'm Donna Kimmel. I'm a psychologist, but this isn't about my work as a psychologist. I have two questions. You mentioned about the um, provisional placeholder. Is that a period during which you can um, advertise or you can go around and show it to manufacturers and you are protected? Absolutely. Okay. What happened, um, uh, once you apply for your provisional, you have 12 months to file your non-provisional. Your provisional application does not get examined. As I say, you get that filing date. So uh, most of the time, if you're gonna go out, search the market, find out anybody's interested to license or buy, or even find out um, if people are interested to buy your product, mm -hmm. that's a great way to start, so definitely. And the second question is kind of like that. You said that recently more people are looking to license the product. How often does that happen? How uh, Can you say, does it successful quite often, or most of the time do people have to go ahead and manufacture their product to get it to market? Um, well, the people that have started business, they know it's, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. Again, uh, I, I mentioned to just about everybody, have a great business plan, as part of your business plan is intellectual property, obviously, uh, but this whole, uh, roadmap that you have to go through, uh, you have to see if everything checks. If not, one way is to license. And again, licensing, I would see uh, somebody that can write a great licensing agreement. It's very, very, very important. 
Uh, and so you have to kind of forecast the future also on your invention because if you forecast um, you're gonna sell 10 million in two years versus uh, maybe a thousand in two years, again, the percentage that you'll be receiving maybe is different. Mm -hmm. And licensing happen, either you get a percentage of uh, your product being sold or you can totally sell the right. Just like when you sell your house or your, your car, you can sell the right, you can sell your patent and you'll walk away. So Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good morning, John Martino with uh, Wings to Go, Buffalo Wings Restaurants. Two quick questions. What's the difference between somebody putting TM versus Circle R? And the other question is, when you do have a number of trademarks uh, registered already, um, I get offers all the time for services to track them and make sure that they stay valid. Is that necessary or does the trademark office offer that kind of service? Um, the first question, TM, when you start the business, when you have your name or your logo, generally they put a TM. Um, and this is before you apply for your trademark. And you're generally covered unless somebody decides to infringe on your mark. So at that point, it's good to, to get to register your trademark. So uh, most people start their business, they want to know how far they go before they apply. Once you get your trademark, you get that R in front of your name. Now, uh, whether we check on your trademark, your trademark is good for a certain time. Again, you have to pay the maintenance fee. If you do not pay the maintenance fee, basically it goes abandoned or it dies. Uh, so we tell all, both on our patent side and trademark, you want to keep up with your maintenance fee because uh, there are perhaps uh, people looking at like when something expires. As soon as it expires, if they're not renewed, then they have the right to start working on that. But the Patent and Trademark Office gives notification as it comes up on expiration or they don't? Um, be honest with you, that I have to check on the trademark side. Uh, but one of the things I wanna mention also, if you have an invention, going back to invention, um, and you decide you just wanna start your business and you don't wanna pursue IP, uh, uh, three years ago, we went f the right first to file rather than first to invent. So you can start the business uh, on a particular invention and somebody else goes file and get a patent. And guess what? They can come and say, we own that property now. So your business can be jeopardized in a sense. So it's very, very important to go after your intellectual property. On trademark, is a little different. Again, you have time, so thank you. That concludes. We're going to have to put a comma in this conversation for now, but definitely want to thank you for your time, thank Michael. You. Some great information designed to really get us thinking. Now, this, the, the purpose of this particular event was just to whet your appetite. I know each of us probably have ideas and different things that we want to consider. We're wondering, well, is a patent or is a trademark, is it right for me? And so certainly now you have enough information, you're equipped to perhaps go to the next step, which is to contact um, either Michael or someone from the patent office to get the additional information that you might need in order to make sure that you're protecting your property. And so I definitely want to thank you for your time this morning. Uh, hopefully everyone got a nugget or two that you can put in your a quiver, in your, your basket to put in. And want to thank those of you that are joining us on the live stream. This concludes the Small Business University. I do want to inv invite you to join us back again next month, September 15th. We will have Laura Van Epperen. She is the founder of Van Epperen. Her topic will be nail your brand message and deliver it wisely. And so branding is key. So you want to make sure that you are back here. Join us again next month at the Small Business University on behalf of Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union and Montgomery Community Media. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again t soon. Thank you, take care.